friends. I'm Dennis Holy. This is PBS Late Night. You know, we all dream every night, whether we recall our dreams or not. And tonight we're going to take a look at our dreams, not from the psychological point of view, but from the metaphysical point of view. Our guest is Barbara O'Gwin. She's the president of the School of Metaphysics that's located in Springfield, Missouri. Good to have you with us. Nice to be with you, Dennis. We have to ask you what metaphysics is so we can all start on the same <laughs> square. Okay. Metaphysics, the way we break it down, is a very simple definition, and it's really working with your mind in a scientific way. Um, quite often, I, I, don't, I don't think I've ever met anybody that hasn't forgotten something, whether it's a name or a face or uh, keys, those kind of things. So part of what we teach you is how to effectively use your mind, how to think. Mm -hmm. how to use what you've already got, the potential that you've got, in terms of undivided attention, concentration, memory, listening. It also goes into being able to re-energize mentally, emotionally, and physically, being able to relax mentally, emotionally, and physically. This gives you the foundation for being able to use more of your mind, including dreams. We start from the, the very beginning of classes with working with dream interpretation. Okay, now how do, how do the dreams fit in? Okay, the dreams fit in because you work with two parts of your mind, basically. There are actually three divisions of the mind, but the two that are pertinent to dreams are your conscious waking mind mm -hmm. and your subconscious mind, which is your intuitive abilities, your understood experiences. Dreams are a communication from your subconscious mind to your conscious waking mind. The value of that is being able to solve problems, being able to uh, get indicators whether your health is in good order or not. If you learn the symbology of dreams, and it's like learning a new language. Mm -hmm. Someone at some point taught you the ABCs and mm -hmm. how mm -hmm. to communicate in a physical language, whether it's English or French or Chinese or whatever. What we teach you is how to communicate in the language of mind. Okay, now, what's the difference from a psychological approach, you know, the psychologists, the psychiatrists, their approach to dream interpretation, and you folks at the School of Metaphysics. Okay, from my experience, and I've, I've got a degree in journalism, but I had some minor courses in, in psychology. Didn't we all? Yeah, <laughs> right. We all tried to find out if we were normal or abnormal. Um, I found out I was abnormal. <laughs> Go ahead. What the basic difference is, is actually seeing it from a mental perspective. You as a thinker, instead of you as a physical being. In other words, Freudian psychology will tend to look at it in terms of physical things. In other words, if you dream that you want to kill your mother, then that's actually what you want to do physically. And the, the symbology of dreams and working with mind in that perspective, you begin to see that each dream is about you and that everyone and everything in the dream is talking about parts of you. So each dream will tell you about the state of your awareness. Okay, well, let's go back to let's go over the dream about the, killing the mother. Okay. How would the metaphys uh, metaphysician uh, 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 interpret that dream. Okay, people in positions of authority in your life, whether it's your mother, father, the president, whatever, mm -hmm. will represent aspects of that third part of mind that I was talking about, your superconscious mind. That's your inner authority, the God part in you, if you want to term it that way. So if you have a uh, dream about... This is about, where the metaphysics part comes in. Well, it's but, all metaphysics. Yeah, but what is meta? Meta means beyond the physical. Okay. okay. So we're talking about mind, okay. not just your physical all right, body. All right. And physics is nothing more than law. So what we teach is mental law, how your mind functions, why it functions the way it does, the substance that it works with. Okay, I want to go back to the, to okay. the, to the killing of the mother again. Right. Give me the interpretation of the Freudians and the interpretation of the <laughs> metaphysician. Okay, the Freudian interpretation, in, in the old days anyway, would tend to um, gear you toward thinking that you actually did not like your mother and you really wanted to physically I kill guess. her. I guess. Well, okay. I don't know about that part of it, but very you didn't physically, like her. Yeah. Right, very physically. In terms of you as an individual and how we work with dreams, it would indicate that there's a change that needs to take place in terms of how you view your own authority. In other words, you might your be... Your own authority? Yeah, you might... Right. It's about you. It's and about that's a very in, important part to remember in terms All the of dreams. dreams about you. Yeah. But the Freudian would say you're in conflict about authority or you're in conflict about your mother. Right. You're saying what again? That you're denying a part of your own authority. In other words, you might be a person that tends to be... Um, just intellectual, strictly intellectual. Mm -hmm. And you don't, you read a lot and you believe a lot, but mm -hmm. you get very confused because on one hand, somebody's going to say one thing and then there's a polar opposite over here. And so you're not sure. That unsurety comes uh -huh. from not working from your experience. Okay, now that's, that's authority. That's, that's a little note I got written at the top, which I didn't even get into at the top in this arena of metaphysics. You're talking about a total self and not to be a dependent on any other person. Isn't that right. part of your overall philosophy? Right. Okay, now we all dream, we dream every night. I mean, people can it's say... It's scientifically proven. Right. People can say, I don't remember my dreams. How do you respond to that? What we do is try to teach you techniques and tools to begin to remember them. First, it starts with a desire to remember them. 
um, if you can see some value in recording your dreams and beginning to work with them, if you can begin to understand the symbols enough so that you get something out of it, then you're going to build that desire to remember them. The second thing is techniques in terms of how to remember them. One of the first things we teach students is what undivided attention is. That's the ability to hold all of your attention, all the five individual senses on one thing for one given second, if that's all you can do right now. Mm -hmm. Concentration is the extended ability of that, being able to hold your attention for any time you want. This is very helpful on anybody's job, as well as in talking with people. So in working with those, it improves your conscious ability to remember and bring back the dreams from your subconscious state. Okay. When we sleep at night, we shut down consciously. And most of us don't remember how many times we tossed or turned or when we threw the pillow off the bed or kicked our bed partner if we're married or whatever. But you can learn how to cause your conscious attention to reach a half conscious, half subconscious state. That's Let me the invite the folks at doing. home to jump into our conversation. Area code 313 in Detroit, 872-4040. We're talking tonight with Barbara O'Gwyn from the School of Metaphysics in Springfield, Missouri. What are the different kinds of dreams there are? There are a lot of different types of dreams, but there are basically maybe three types. One type is a health dream. Health. Right. And these will show up in terms of small vehicles, cars, small boats, small airplanes. If you have a dream about that and maybe it's uh, falling out of the sky or it's wrecked in some way, that's an indication that you need to start paying attention to your physical health. Now that may uh, appear in a dream state up to three months before there would actually be a physical problem. I read problem. that today and I found that absolutely amazing. How yeah. did you folks ever come up with that one? <laughs> Through experience. Since 1960, people that have worked with the school have been analyzing and working with parts of mind and how to actually use the inner parts of your mind. Not just in the dream state, but with conscious awareness. Okay, so we've got a health dream. What kind of other dreams do we have? Okay, there are also um, entertaining dreams. There are a lot of dreams that you have that you think, wow, that's crazy, it doesn't make any sense. But when you learn the symbology of mind, how that, la how that language works, it begins to make some sense in terms of what's happening in your everyday life. What we can help you do is interpret the symbols. It's up to you to put it into your life. The third type of dream is what most people might call a clairvoyant dream, but we call it precognitive. In other words, it's seeing the probabilities of future events. A lot of people come into the classes that have these types of dreams because they're very scared. In some cases, they even feel guilty because usually they've dreamed about deaths and of people that were very close to them, loved ones or family mm -hmm. members. Mm -hmm. And they keep having these and they don't understand why. And they begin to think somehow they're causing them. So they want to shut off the dreaming mechanism. They don't understand it and they're really confused and they have a lot of difficulties with their, their mental and emotional states. I want to go to the phones right now, but okay. I want to ask you, I always want to ask you one more question before I go to the phones. <laughs> um, I'm, going to, I'm going to toss out some words, and you tell me what these are the symbols of, okay? I'll try to. Because I ran down the uh, home. Okay, a home or a house is indicating your mind, and the different floors of a house will indicate what level of mind is being talked about. Like a basement? It would be what? Basement would be what we term the unconscious mind. The unconscious mind is the part of mind where you store your misunderstandings, things you don't understand, your resentments, your hatreds, um, your prejudices, those kind of things. Ah, and, and upstairs? Uh, the first floor would indicate your conscious waking mind. The second floor would indicate the subconscious mind, that intuitive faculty that we were talking about. How about, about. fire? Does that have a symbol? Does that have yeah. a meaning? Yeah, fire in a dream usually indicates expansion. There's some kind of uh, expanded thinking that's going on. Maybe you're becoming more open-minded. How about animals? Animals in a dream, most animals, there are exceptions to this, but most animals in a dream indicate habits. Could be a physical habit, could be a mental habit. How about a thing like a ladder? A ladder would be a way of moving from one level of consciousness to another. So would an elevator, um, any type of movement that occurs in terms of what you're talking about. So every, all these things that show up in the dream, they're symbols. Right. And they're giving us a message. Right. And what you want to do is get folks to be able to use those messages to improve their lives. Oh, it's so beneficial. A lot of people use them, like lawyers and, and advertising people especially. Will well, work. those are two groups that you could use. <laughs> the well, they'll work weeks trying to solve a problem. And then finally, they'll release it consciously, go to bed, wake up the next morning, and the whole thing is laid out for them. They finally released it consciously and let their subconscious mind work for them. Your subconscious mind has a duty to your conscious mind. They're two halves of a whole. And that is to fulfill any desire that your conscious mind has, if allowed. By law? By law and by... <laughs>